Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dhyasya Yatam Vayarita Ratas Chate Swabhigyaswara Tene Brahma Vrdaya Adhikavaya Mujantija Suraya Tejo Varim Ridan Jata Vinimayo Jatra Trisagun Rusya Dhamna Svena Sada Nirahasta Kuhakam Satyang Param Dimayi Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. On Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. The primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. <coughs> it is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, Only because of him do material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kim Vapur Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hidi Avarudya Tetra. Kriti Bihi Susu Subis Takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message by this culture of knowledge, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska buvibhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful man, uh, relish Shrimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. O 
although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyam Taksto Bhadrani Vidu Nati Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself a righteous activity. It is and for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, Lord is in everyone's heart acts as a best-wishing friend, best friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu <coughs> Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalo badayas chaye chaita tairan abhidam stitvam satve prasiddhiti By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evan prasana manaso, Bhagavat bhakti yogataha, Bhagavat tattva vigyanam, Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya grantis chidyante chashakaramani I'm sorry, chidyante sarvasamsaya siyante chashakaramani Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. So today we're going to hear a few things about Lord Balaram. And I want to start with something that's very controversial. That is. Um, One second.
Micah twenty. Okay, that's my mistake. Micah twenty three. Two twenty seven. Yeah. <clears throat> no, okay, I got it. Two twenty three one one seven. Yeah, this is uh Majulila chapter twenty three, verse one one seven. And it says illusory stories opposed to the conclusions of Krishna consciousness concern the destruction of the other dynasty. Krishna's disappearance, the story that Krishna and Balaram arise from a black hair and a white hair of Shirodaksha Vishnu, and the story about the kidnapping of the queens. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained to Sanatana Goswami the, the proper conclusions of these stories. Now, these are, are four different, what's being called illusory stories opposed to the conclusions of Krishna consciousness that are, that are in the Mahabharata and is purposely put in there to bewilder the atheists and non-believers. This is why you have to come to class. This is why you have to hear bona fide explanations that explain the real nature of Krishna consciousness and and all the... the uh, intricate uh, histories such as in the Mahabharata. Otherwise, it's very easy to be mis to, for, to uh, misunderstand things. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, due to envy, many asuras describe Krishna to be like a black crow or an incarnation of a hare. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Sanatana Goswami how to counteract all these asuric explanations of Krishna. The word kaka means crow and kesha means hare. The asuras describe Krishna as an incarnation of a crow, an incarnation of a sudra, a blackish tribe, and an incarnation of a hare, not knowing that the word kesha means kaisha, and that ka means Lord Brahma and isha means Lord. Thus, the word ka kesha indicates that Krishna is the Lord of Lord Brahma. It's not that he's a black hair. Some of Lord Krishna's past, see, it's very easy to get confused uh, by uh, Sanskrit because they have this uh, uh, euphemistic, uh, not euphemistic, they have this thing called sandhya, the uh, uh, elimination of a vowel uh, and bringing together two consonants. So uh, that, that bringing together of two words, there's a rule of how to separate it back to get the original two words. But oftentimes, speculators will separate it incorrectly and make a different meaning from what the original meaning was. So this goes on a lot in Sanskrit uh, interpretation, where people can get the meaning that they want by falsely dividing the words. So this is one example of it. Some of Lord Krishna's pastimes are mentioned in the Mahabharata as Maushala Lila. These include the stories of the destruction of the Yadu dynasty, Krishna's disappearance, his being pierced by a hunter's arrow, and the story of Krishna being an incarnation of a piece of hair, Kesha Avatara, as well as Mahisi Harana, the kidnapping of Krishna's queens. All these are not factual, but related for the bewilderment of the Asuras, who want to prove that Krishna is an ordinary human being. They are false in the sense that these pastimes are not eternal, nor are they transcendental or spiritual. There are many people who are by nature averse to the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. Such people are called asuras. They have mistaken ideas about Krishna 
As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the Asuras are given a chance to forget Krishna more and more, birth after birth. Thus, they make their appearance in a family of Asuras and continue this process, being kept in bewilderment about Krishna. Asuras in the dress of sannyasis even explain the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in different ways according to their own imaginations. Thus, they continue to remain asuras, birth after birth. As far as Kesha Avatara, incarnations of a hare, is concerned, it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.7.26. Well, if you go there and read that, it, it explains that Krishna and Balaram both have uh, very uh, black hair. And even when they're supposed to be 100 or 120 years old, their hair is still black. And that's the difference because they are between uh, Krishna and Balaram and, and ordinary living entities. Ordinary living entities like myself, your hair goes gray as you grow, grow older. But uh, Krishna never grows old. Advaitama Chutim and Adim and Antarupam Adyam Purana Purusham Nava Yovanam Chad. He is always a pristine youth. He never grows old. Therefore, the representation of God in the Sistine Chapel in, in uh, the Vatican in Rome is wrong. Uh, obviously, the po a Pope advised Michelangelo, who drew that magnificent painting on the on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, that God is an old old man with gray hair and wrinkles. That means the Catholic Church doesn't under understand anything about God. You see. Uh, so, and then these false stories that are in, and why are they called false? Because they're not eternal. And they're purposely put in there to mislead the atheists and asuras, the uh, non-believers. Who are the atheists and non-believers? Well, they like to interpret scripture on their own. They don't really like hearing it from authorities. And they believe in uh, interpret speculative interpretations because when you speculate, you bring even God down to your level by your speculation or below you. So, therefore, it says, actually, these are not factual, but are related for the bewilderment of the Asuras, who want to prove that Krishna is an ordinary human being. They are false in the sense that these pastimes are not eternal, nor are they transcendental or spiritual. There are many people who are by nature averse to the supremacy of the Supreme Person of Godhead, Vishnu, such people are called asuras. They have mistaken ideas about Krishna. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the asuras are given a chance to forget Krishna more and more birth after birth. As far as Kesha avatar incarnation of a hare is concerned, it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.7.26. So that's where it mentions that Krishna and Balaram both have black hair throughout their whole uh, pastimes. They never, never, their hair never turns gray. The Vishnu Purana also states, Ujjharatmana Kesho Sita Krishna Mahabala. Similarly, it is stated in the Mahabharata Adi Parva 189, 31 to 32. Uh, so he quotes that verse where it's, uh, okay, so then it says, Thus in Srimad Bhagavatam, the Vishnu Purana, and the Mahabharata, there are references to Krishna and Balaram being incarnations of a black hair and a white hair, respectively. It is stated that Lord Vishnu snatched two hairs, one white and one black, from his head. These two hairs entered the wombs of Rohini and Devaki, members of the Yadu dynasty. Balarama was born from Rohini, Krishna was born from Devaki. Thus, Balaram appeared from the first hair and Krishna appeared from the second hair. It was also foretold that all the Asuras who were enemies of the demigods would be cut down by Lord Vishnu by his white and black plenary expansions and that the Supreme Person of Godhead would appear and perform wonderful activities. In this connection, one should see the Lagu Bhagavatamrita, the chapter called Krishnamrita, verses 156 to 164. 
Srila Rupa Goswami has refuted these arguments about the hair incarnation, and, as, and his refutation is supported by Sri Baladeva Vidya Bhusana commentaries. This matter is further discussed in the Krishna Samadharva 29 and in the commentary known as Sarva Samvadini by Srila Jiva Goswami. So, that means that without the commentary of the bona fide Vaishnava Acharyas, there's 100% chance that we will misunderstand the scriptural uh, uh, scriptures by reading them directly uh, without any reference to the uh, Acha previous Acharya's commentaries. So as long as we maintain that attitude that I want to read it on my own, I don't want, I don't want anybody else's opinion, we will not know what the Shastras say. And this is taught in schools today. They teach that, uh, uh, and, and this started with the, the uh, uh, Enlightenment uh, period. Uh, at the end of the Middle Ages, there was this period called the Enlightenment. And what was the Enlightenment? Uh, there was a rejection of, of authoritarian, uh, authoritarian uh, uh, explanations of uh, Shastra. And People started uh, with personalities like John Locke, who's like considered the father of the Constitution of the United, United States. Uh, people started, uh, John Locke especially said, you know, there's no such thing as innate knowledge. We should just depend on our reason and logic and, and our experience in this life, in this body, to understand the truth. So that means you can read scripture like the Bible and interpret it. In, in any way you want. So that uh, Yatamat Tatapat, not only in India, it's also in the West. And because of it, there are many misconceptions. However, in the case of uh, Lord Balaram specifically, Lord Balaram is the, uh, he acts as servitor God, although he is Krishna himself. Now this is a sounds a little confusing, but actually, uh, this is explained in depth in the uh, in the Bhag in the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Lord Chaitanya. It says, uh, it "says what to speak of others? Even Lord Baladeva." The Supreme Personality of Godhead is full of emotions like pure friendship and paternal love. Purport. Although Lord Baladeva appeared before the birth of Lord Krishna and is therefore Krishna's worshipable elder brother, he used to act as Krishna's eternal servitor. In the spiritual sky, all the Vaikuntha planets are predominated by the quadruple expansions of Krishna known as Chaturvyuha. They are direct expansions from Baladeva. In other words, Baladeva is the first expansion of Krishna. The only difference between Krishna and Baladeva is Baladeva is somewhat whitish in, in color and Krishna is darkish in color. But otherwise, there's no difference between them. So it says uh, that, but uh, from Baladeva comes the Mahashankarshan, the first uh, of the quadruple uh, expansions of the Lord for s the spiritual and then, and then the second quadruple expansion for uh, the material world, the spiritual and material world. Although the material world, the spiritual world is never created, it's expanded uh, by Balaram as Mahashankarsan and then Padumna Aniruddha and so forth. Vasudeva Padumna Aniruddha. So then the second Sankarshan expansion is the, uh, for the material uh, world creation. Uh, from the second uh, Sankarshan, uh, se second quadruple uh, expansion comes Narayana, and then from Narayana, the Vishnu incarnations in the material world. So all that are expansions of Lord Balaram. And it says here, 
And why? Because Lord Balaram assists the Lord in the spiritual expansion and the material creation. And also as Shesha in all the different activities that he engages in. Those are the five types of, uh, let's say, service of Lord Balaram. He, he acts as servant to God, although he's God himself. So it says here that according to social conventions, one may be superior to Krishna, but factually everyone engages in his service. Therefore, in the spiritual sky or the material sky, in all the different planets, no one is able to supersede Lord Krishna or demand service from him. On the contrary, everyone engages in the service of the Lord. The more he is, uh, as such, the more a person engages in the service of the Lord, the more he is important. And conversely, the more one is bereft of transcendental service of Krishna, the more he invites the bad fortune of material contamination. In the material world, although materialists want to become one with God or compete with God, everyone directly or indirectly engages in the service of the Lord. The more one is forgetful of the service of the Lord, the more he is considered to be dying. Therefore, when one develops pure Krishna consciousness, he immediately develops his eternal servitorship to Krishna. Like, for example, many people since uh, the advent of television have become couch potatoes. You ever hear that term, couch potato? Yeah. It means you're just sitting on the couch all day watching television. Like, for example, uh, one day I went to see this one devotee and uh, you know, to his house. And when I walked in, he had a large screen television. And uh, he said, hello, Haribo Prabhu, come sit down, you know. And I sat down next near him. And he was watching the television. And, uh, and every once in a while he would say something to me, but he kept his eye on the television. <laughs> that television was on almost 24 hours a day in his house. This is going on. Uh, let me ask a question to some of you, right? Do you see that in India? Huh? Yes. Yeah, you walk into the house, the television is on. And I tell this funny story. It's a true story. One, one devotee, uh, well, not initiated in this kind, but he's, he's, he's a big supporter of this kind. Anyway, he invited me to do a, uh, his house blessing. He bought a new house. So I was, uh, I was explaining... Uh, it was a, uh, I gave a class and I explained what is the meaning of Griha Pravesh. I said the meaning of Griha Pravesh is that you install Krishna as the talker of the house. Right? And I said, unfortunately today, people consider the television as talker of the house. Talker means the owner of the house, right? When I said that, uh, the door, the front door opened, and, and, the, and the person that owned the house, he had gone absent, right? Then he walked in with a newly purchased 96-inch television. <laughs> Just about I said that people... <laughs> Consider the television as the talker of the house, right? He walks in with the 96-inch television. I mean, it's a big box, right? And I said, and, and then I didn't really understand what he was doing at first, you know, but I kept talking. I said, actually, I said, if you have a television, what you should do is open your window to your house, look outside, make sure no one is there, take the television and throw it out the window. And right there, he walked in with the television. <laughs> and, and then the others, you know, uh, when they saw that, they all started laughing. Because, you know, he did exactly the opposite of what I was saying, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the whole idea of, uh, of uh, Griha Pravesh. Krishna is the talker of the house, not the television. Krishna is the center. Uh, I mean, you establish the altar of Krishna, and that's the center of all the activities of the house. Usually now what people do, uh, I remember once uh, we were preaching door-to-door -door in the South Hall, England, 
with a large Hindu community. And we were knocking on people's doors at night, you know, up, up until around 10 o'clock at night, and ta telling them to please come to our new temple and, and, and come to Jen Mastami and so forth. So in this one house, the Gujarati house, they invited us in. And uh, they said, oh, our grandmother is waiting for you. And we said, what? You know, what do you mean your grandmother? Oh, you have to go upstairs. She's upstairs. She's waiting for you. Now, they were downstairs watching television, the whole family, right? The sons, the daughters, the wives, the kids. So we go upstairs, and yeah, there, there was a grandmother upstairs in, in a small bedroom. And when she saw us, immediately she gave her dandabat. And, and we couldn't speak Gujarati. She couldn't speak English. But she, she motioned to us to come into her bedroom. So we come into the bedroom, and she tells us to sit down on her bed. And then she opens up the closet door, and there's an altar. And, and, and she said, Kirtan, Kirtan. <laughs> so we chanted Hare Krishna. And uh, she was chanting with us. And then she did some, some arti ceremony. And then, uh, and then that was it. You know? And then we went downstairs, and they said, did you see the grandmother? And we said, yeah. And I, I was looking at them. I was a new devotee. I didn't know much about what Krishna consciousness is. But I could understand that there was a gigantic culture gap between the grandmother and her kids and the grandkids. And they had relegated her altar to a, to a little closet in the be her bedroom. You see? This is, the, this is this tragedy of modern Hinduism. There's, there's this gap in the last two or three generations between the people who were practicing Sanatan Dharma but didn't really understand the philosophy. And because of that, at one point, they were not able to convince their kids. When they were small, yes, but when they grew up after going to school and being indoctrinated in Asuric knowledge, the television became the Thakur, and the, if there was a deity, it was relegated to some small you know, space in a house as, as a customarial thing rather than as a real thing. So here it says, he also considers himself a servant of Lord Krishna, speaking about Balaram. Oh, he says, therefore, when one develops pure Krishna consciousness, he immediately develops his eternal servitorship to Krishna. Now, next verse. He also considers himself, meaning Balaram, a servant of Lord Krishna. Indeed, who is there who does not have this conception of being a servant of Lord Krishna? That's a rhetorical question that uh, Krishna Kaviraj is asking, meaning, you know, when he says who, he means which idiot is there <laughs> that does not have the, this conception of being a servant of Lord Krishna? He who is Shesha, Sankarsan, with his thousands of mouths, serves Sri Krishna by assuming ten forms. He's talking about Balaram. Rudra, who is an expansion of Sadashiva and who appears in unlimited universes, is also a guna avatara, qualitative incarnation, and is the ornament of all... Okay, so it's going into a different subject here. But the idea is that Balaram, although he's, he's non different than Krishna, he acts as the servant of the Lord. And this is something, and, and because of that, he's also considered the original spiritual master of all living entities. So anyone who is a follower of Krishna consciousness uh, accepts Balaram as uh, guru. And, and uh, uh, all spiritual masters have to follow in that uh, uh, spirit of Balaram as being the servant and not the Lord. So nowadays there's, there's a big tradition of the guru being considered God. But if Lord Balaram, who is God, considers himself the servant of Krishna, that's the proper understanding of, of that, that should be accepted by all gurus. They should never uh, 
See, there's two things. One is the guru tells his disciples he's God. And the other is because of the exuberance and the, uh, the disciples, they begin to refer to the guru as God. And the guru doesn't say anything. He just hears it and doesn't say, don't say this. He accepts it. You see. So both things are wrong. That, uh, uh, and when Lord Chaitanya was referred to as Krishna himself, he would block his ears. He said, don't, don't say that. And he would block his ears. Because he came in the mood of Srimati Radharani as a servant and to demonstrate how to become a devotee. Okay, so this is some, some points about Lord Balaram that I thought we should hear today because he is the original spiritual master. He's always the assistant of Krishna in his pastimes and he considers himself the servant of the Lord, although he is the Lord himself. And he engages in different ways to help Krishna in his pastimes. Okay, are there any questions? In the same way, Lord Nityananda was always serving Lord Chaitanya. Yes, go ahead. 